just obviously with the with, with the vaccinations and the uh, protocols loosening up because of the obviously the vaccinations here, it, it feels it's the most normal it's felt in a long time. So this feels great. Does everybody basically fully vaccinated on the I think we're close. I, I, I think we're close to 100. It's just I think there's room for waiting periods. Yeah, we're on like waiting periods at, at two weeks out from the second one. Uh, and then I think we'll be 100% with the entire staff and all the players. And I think a couple of the incoming guys took care of it before they got here. How's that changed now? Coach, did not everybody's kind of back. Everybody's sort of normal now you can actually be the way you normally be. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, being able to go into study hall and sit next to a guy and you know, sit next to Gaffney yesterday in study hall and ask him about his class, going into the training room and, uh, you know, uh, interacting with the guys, you know, you know, get a chance to talk to a couple of women's players, you know, like giving, uh, get a hug from a cook and a handshake, <laughs> you know, it's like, have, like it's been fist bumps and uh, an awkward kind of social distancing, so it feels good. Is is everyone here that you expect to be here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got yeah, what we're we're exactly where we thought we'd be. All the freshmen are here, uh, and all the returners are here. The uh, you know that Gary's uh, you know close to uh, be clear to do more. You know, out there on the court, I think he'll be able to start doing some drills. You know, he had that, uh, you know, really, really difficult knee injury, and he's returning uh, to form. So, how normal an off season is it going to be? Have you been able to plan out? You know, we're going to be able to go full at this date. We're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing that together. All of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, normal. This, this is. It almost feels like looking at like. Um, the amount of kids visiting campus, the recruiting on the road, and the practice calendar between those things, it's almost like we're condensing the 18 months that we've <laughs> that we've been uh, you know, not not functioning normally. We're condensing it into like these two months in, in June and July, like the, the, this week, and the, the June calendar is in July in, into August. It's crazy busy. And, I've never been more excited in my life to be this crazy busy. Is it nice to have recruits back on campus just to kind of zoom with them all the time? Yeah, I mean, we were lucky in the 21 class where um, we got a chance to see Russell and, and Jordan and Samson uh, a fair amount before, uh, before the COVID, uh, you know, we shut everything down in March. And then any questions we had with those guys, we could fill in the blanks with, with the video stuff. So, uh, but the 22 class, we, we were, um, with the exception of maybe a player or two, we didn't we, we hadn't seen a lot of the 22s and any of the 23s. So, yeah, I mean, being able to get out in June and July and and see those upcoming classes is, is huge for us because. Uh, you know, what, what we've done up, up to 21, I think, has put us in a, in a great spot. But um, to be competing for championships at the level that we want to, we got to keep stacking uh, top, top recruiting classes. And a huge part of that is the evaluation, not what they're ranked. Our, our evaluation matters a lot more. What, what sort of things are the kids doing now? Like, what's the junior team for the kids? Yeah, I mean, so, so these guys are. Um, you know, we're practicing four days a week with them, uh, you know, uh, around an hour. Um, and it's a uh, very fast pace, obviously. Uh, yeah, but very fast pace, very competitive. Uh, yeah, really focused on, you know, on, uh, you know, on how we're going to play next year. Try to, you know, extend the court more defensively and pressure more and, and, and play faster. Uh, Get out, transition more because we you know, we have a you know we have a very athletic team and, and we're turning a lot of players. So we, we obviously we trust these guys uh, in terms of shot selection, taking care of the ball, that they'll be responsible, you know, with more freedom. Um, you know, and then these guys are spending you know four hours a week with the uh, you know with, with Gavin, who I think is uh, going to do a great job of building on what Mike did for us. You know, Mike did a great job for us um, bringing Gavin in from. Uh, 
you know, from a great program like Purdue and, and to build on the work that Mike did, I think we'll continue to make that, uh, you know, that the, the performance, uh, strength and conditioning thing a, a, a real asset. It's kind of a fresh start for Cook. I mean, you went through a lot last year, trying to get up the court and everything. Is it just in the game of like a, a restart for him? Yeah, I mean, a Cook looks, a, a Cook looks, he's got that same look. Uh, in his eye that he had when he got here, um, you know, like, like that, that that self belief, that hunger, that that, that player that's on a mission uh, to reach these you know these big goals. So, um, and, and you know, coming back last year, even though he was cleared, it was a very difficult situation because you get cleared in 11 months. And, uh, but you're not back to yourself or better than you were until 18 month mark. I think at times, you know, uh, you know, he had a you know, he had a hard time kind of dealing with the reality of that. And then as coaches, that was a tough thing to to manage. So, uh, but he looks great. I mean, he's moving around the court the way he did. Um, and this is a big year for him. And. Uh, He's part of the front court that's got a chance to be one of the best in the country. That 18 month mark, obviously, I guess it would be like August or September or whatever. So, you're, are you pretty confident he'll be like full ready to go by the time the season yeah. starts? Yes, he, he looks great. I mean, I, I think too, the one thing that he did, this, um, which I think was good for him, is he went to, uh, he went home. He was in New Hampshire during May. And, um, it's really the first time he was home for an extended period of time. Got a chance to see family, got a chance to see some friends. Uh, and I think that was good for him. I think that rejuvenated him. And, 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 uh, he, he's got that same look that he had uh, when he first got here. And I like that. Dan, how is the name, image, and likeness legislation affecting the players? And how are you as a coaching staff going to help these guys deal with all this new stuff that they're going to have to deal with in terms of you know, yeah. monetizing themselves. Yeah, I mean, first off, like thank the you know the state general assembly, Phil. General assembly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know for uh, you know, for having a foresight division, uh, you know, to make that happen here in Connecticut, I think that's important. Um, yeah, and it, it's something that the players um, obviously going to have to have to learn how to manage, um, and obviously have the opportunity to take advantage of, you know, the, these guys and, and you know, the, the, these women and the, these, uh, you know, these men as athletes in college, oftentimes they don't have the time, you know, um, the amount of time that their sport takes, they don't have the time to have a job and work during the year, so it gives them a chance to, um, you, know, you know, take advantage of, uh, of what they've built in terms of uh, what they've accomplished in their name relative to the sport they play. Just got to make sure that they manage it the right way. Uh, they're not coming to me and saying they've got a photo shoot at 1.45 and we've got practice at 2 o'clock. You know, like, they just, they're going to have to be very, very organized <laughs> you know, with that. So, a, lot of schools, a lot of schools are hiring companies, consultants, things like that to help the players get through that. Is that something that you guys are looking at? Or are you thinking of someone on your staff who's going to be specializing in this? How's that going to work? Yeah, yeah. So we, we've done that. Yeah, we've have hired outside uh, agency to handle that. And we, we can't have any, uh, we, we can't play a role in any of that. Uh, in violation. So, yeah, I mean, these guys are, and, and, and these, uh, the, the female athletes, are, they're going to have to be really, really organized. And, and uh, but I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be a really good thing. Hopefully. You're talking about missing having this last year as far as this regular routine. What do you, how much do you think it's going to do to help their development to have this routine back? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, 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 it really, it's going to help players across the country. Um, you know, I think significantly, uh, but I think it helps us. Uh, it, it, it's more of an advantage for us because of what our staff and our players, how much we all put in during the summer. Like we we, we take full advantage of every second we can spend uh, together. And, and you know, like a lot of college programs talk about player development as part of a recruiting pitch. We live it, um, and it's just a, you know. I think it's, uh, we rely on our freshmen uh, in general. Uh, we're, we're, 
you know, we're maybe less transfer portal and more relying on our young players here on the court to perform for us early in their career. Um, and I think that uh, it's going to allow like Jordan Hawkins, Russell Diggins, Samson Johnson, a runway to really help us that, that Adama and Dre didn't get last year. So. How you know, talented, you know, they just have that athletic talent that it's like, you know, validation when they start moving around the court. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just, you know, with Samson, just that, that length and athleticism, uh, talent just jumps off, uh, you know, Jordan, you know, the shooting and the athletic ability and the size. And, Russell, uh, the game, and the Philly, just say the Philly. Yeah, how does this... Philly really swag. Or, yeah. I don't know. Without book, how does this team become different? When you assimilate new guys, will it change the way you play? Yeah, yeah, just deeper. And, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, the, the ball is going to have to move better. I think when you have a player that's that dynamic of a guy, as a tendency, um, you know, you, you become uh, a little bit less aggressive, a little bit more passive, a little bit wondering and waiting for, for Book to go do something because, you know, you guys only saw the stuff they did on game night. You know, it's a little paralyzing playing with a guy, uh, especially the things that you didn't see you were doing on a daily basis around here. So, you know, we, we, we've got, uh, I think, guys that... Um, Big thing for I think the team is like there's, there's guys that had good years that have got to go from good to great. You got a guy like RJ uh, or, or Tyrese until the end of the year, you know, or like Isaiah, you know, guys that had like a good year, right? Or who are trying to go from good to like all conference level season. So chip on your shoulder to do that. And then you had some guys that let's say we're disappointed in their year, whether it was like injury or inconsistency, or coaches that don't feel, uh, that don't feel good about the way March went to end the season, that 4507. So, you know, that there's not a program in the country that's gonna have a bigger chip on their shoulder going into the year. Uh, and, and there's no one complacent here that feels, I think we all feel like confident that we achieved some goals, but none of us will walk around the building patting, patting each other on the back about how we did last year. Yeah. What? I was just going to say, do you have 45 7 t shirts made up? Are there posters? Is it, um, yeah, yeah. Show? There's like a movie. It was like, um, <laughs> like uh, I think it was like Jim Carrey or something. It was like a comedian went to like a, a horror genre movie or it's like numbers. Does anybody here? No? No. Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember what it was. Like. Yeah, yeah, no, there's something. Phil, you know. No, that's not a horror movie. That's like, oh, horror movie. Yeah, I horror movie. Where like these numbers are always, like that forty-five or seven is like implanted in the brains. Like people are coming on the unofficial visit and asking why it's on the scoreboard, why it's on shirts, why it's on people's laptops. You just you need things that are driving you, and like you get it. These guys are in a lift, and uh, somebody doesn't want to finish their last set on the bench. Somebody's got to be in there yelling 4507. You know, you don't want to watch film as a coach on, on, on July 3rd at 6 o'clock because you want to go food shopping for a barbecue the next day. 4507. You need that. Um, you need that to drive you. So. Have you taken a break? Like, much of a break? We did. I mean, you know, the time for us to get away is in when the kids are not on campus. So. Like the guys, a lot of them went home for a couple of weeks. Adama went to Mali, uh, which is like a beautiful thing for him. Like a cook, but a lot of the guys were went home, and we were able to take a little bit of a break, get away, recharge, regroup, and then get ready for like a huge, huge summer for us, recruiting, player development, just getting back to functioning normally. So, so how did you shut down yourself? I mean, how do you take that break? You know, I, I'll, you know, I, I get nature. I do stuff with the family. I do. I like to go to the beach. I like. I'll go to the Jersey Shore, see family. Um, 
you know, just spend time around Andrea, Danny, Andrew, my family, go see my parents, go see, you know, my mother-in-law, Patty, my brother-in-law, Ken, you know, reconnect with people in Jersey. Why can't they keep telling you to stop scrolling 25 or something in the sand? <laughs> I leave that, what well, if I leave that here? Yeah, yeah, yeah my time, no, she, she checks me, good, Andrea. Ball's wife podcast. <laughs> so, so not, not only with the NIL rules, but the transfer rules and everything. How is it going to change how long kids stay? Are you expecting that with the NIL, you might get some kids to stay longer in school than they would have before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, there, there is no work-life balance now. That looks off here. Okay, that doesn't exist. Nick Saban doesn't look like. You know, if you try to get to that level with your program, it doesn't. So I, I know how to unwind a little bit. That I think that's a real thing. I think that's got a chance, uh, especially in a place like this where you know you, you have uh, you've got really just a one major professional sports team uh, with the WNBA. But beyond that, you don't have major professional sports here. So are there going to be more opportunities with NIL for? College athletes at University of Connecticut probably would they be more inclined to do an extra year? You know, you know maybe, but um, possibly. But and also too, in in men's basketball, you've got these other options for these kids now, which we're recruiting against this overtime elite league, and I can't remember the name of the thing they're doing with the G League. Um, so I, I think it's a good thing to try to do more. Uh, to make it more appealing for the better players to want to go play college basketball. Are you concerned about the overtime of the league cutting in? I don't think so. I, I don't. I think the type of the, the, the type of families and kids are going to want to play for me. That's probably not going to be the other option. It's going to be more like another high-level college program. Uh, so I don't just the mindset of a kid that wouldn't want to come play for me. I think it's going to be different. What are you hearing on? What are you hearing on James and his? Uh, you know what he's been up to. <laughs> uh, we, we Facetime with James a lot, and uh, you know, come on, you get him on there. It's, it's uh, we miss his personality. You know, James is an incredible personality. Uh, you know, James was a worker. Uh, he grew into a worker, and it's got a, a like just brought a life into the building. So we've, we've got a, Shul has some of that too, by the way. You'll see that quickly. Uh, but he uh, he looks great. He looks great. Uh, you know, listen, but what, once you get past five for me, you, you once you get past maybe five in that draft, I can see some of the guys in the top five that, but once you get past five for me, I think you have to really seriously think about taking him. Because uh, because of the nature of the NBA, the NBA for guards is, is guys that can create their own shot, guards that uh, can score at all three levels potentially with the athleticism, and guards that can make difficult shots. James proved over his career being a, a high level guard in the NBA is about like being able to be able to create separation, get your own shot, and make tough shots, and the athleticism. So, man, if I'm six or seven. And I need a big time guard that has a chance to be second or third leading scorer on an NBA team, or worst case scenario, a Lou Williams type of player. It'd be tough to pass on. That's a pretty deep box. How's that make you better as far as competition and practice? I, I think we're going to be able to implement a style of play like I did in my year six at, at Rhode Island, where we just overwhelmed people with depth and. Listen, we're never going to play irresponsibly fast. Um, but I think that year, you know, we were somewhere at top 150 in the country in pace of play, maybe around top 125, um, you know, with, with elite defense. And we overwhelmed people with just uh, such depth and, and so many different ways we could beat you that, you know, to me, I, I'm hoping that that's where we was at this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think you know for Tyrese, it's just shooting, making threes. You know, shoot 37, 38 percent from the three-point line. 
um, and working on his finishing at the rim, which is something that you could get better at both of those things. We worked on his mechanics, shooting, moving the ball away from the front of his face, clearing up the shooting pocket, and then just put him in a situation where he's working on finishing at the rim, just not always with athleticism, but with spin and touch. Uh, as a guy who's six six, strong and athletic, he didn't finish as well, especially late, didn't shoot as well, uh, which kind of marred the type of year that uh, that Tyrese had. And at RJ, it's like, can you go from twelve and a half to fourteen and a half, fifteen a game? That's the difference. You know, can you, you know, can you just be a little? Can you be more aggressive earlier in, in possessions? So we're going to try to give these guys more freedom to be more aggressive earlier in possessions. And it's not, you know, it, it's not these huge drastic improvements. It's like RJ, you know, we, we got to get you to go from twelve and a half and and four a game to. 14, 7, and 5.9 assists a game. And Bulldog, you know, so it's not, I don't think we need, we don't need to replace like Bucks 20 again by any one guy. Just a little bit more. You expect a better title this year? I mean, is he a little bit behind the behind eight ball last year? So the injury, the immutability that yes. we have? Yes, um, yes. EC, uh, or, or any guy like EC Matthews, you know, does the ACL so much better the second year. And, 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 and Tyler's going to be so much better um, in the second year. And he had moments that he could build off. He had that stretch during the, you know, when Brooke went out where he was at times dynamic. He could build off that. Just apply everything he's learned to this point. You know, have a great summer. Um, really be able to focus on his body and his game as opposed to his health. Like last summer, he had to focus on his health. You know, this summer he can focus on his game and his body, um, which is a huge thing. What does Isaiah, what's he got to work on? You know, listen, at the, at the four, you know, we, 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 need, we, we, you know we, we need a guy that's a three-point threat. You know, we need a guy that other teams have to guard there. Um, you know, so major point of emphasis for him and Cook, uh, any of these guys that that are, that, that, that are going to play at the four, um, Got to be able to give that to us offensively. Uh, you know, as we're also working with Daba on trying to add to expand, expand his game a little bit, at least being able to play and dribble handoffs and, and um, you know, and be able to dribble at guards, uh, you know, in, in, in our half court sets where we try to open up the court more. So, like, uh, yeah, you know, Isaiah being able to handle the ball and pass the ball and people not standing in the lane when. Um, you know, when we have two front court guys on the court, we need one of those guys to be a legitimate three point threat. What difference have you seen in the guys, you know, during the pandemic that couldn't go home? It was a really a mentally challenging year. Is there, are they more relaxed in three now? Because they can turn back to normal? What do you see the difference? In yeah, I mean, like again, relative to just the season that we went through, not relative to, not relative to what like real, real life horrifying experience that COVID's put on just ordinary people, just relative to our season. It's really, it was a lot. I mean, the, the year for these guys, like the holidays, um, I know it's that, like just not being able to see people, the, the monotony of just like room to room to facility, to bus, to, it, it just was really, really bizarre and taxing. Especially for players where the year wasn't going great, you know, like wasn't going great, dealing with stuff, uh, family, you know, lose a family member at home or somebody you're close to, can't go home for the funeral or the wake. I mean, it's just so much, so much that went on. Going to the Big East tournament where normally it's like fans on the streets and you're in like quarantine. And then you go to Indy and like you couldn't even explain how bizarre and how different that was than like normal NCAA experience. It was like, these guys dealt with a lot and um, just so excited that there's like a first night on the horizon and like Big East first game back with fans. I mean, the coaches, we all miss the fans. You have no idea like how much the fans mean to sports. Like, sports is really fans throwing shit, but like fans, sports without fans is not, it's not it.
can't wait for the fans to come back. How have the players adjusted to uh, Luke on the staff now? Yeah, you know, it's, it's um, when, when a player meets a coach uh, or a new staff member quickly, like they sniff you out real quick, you know, like they do, like meet somebody, you, they, they, the first conversation, like you just get a sense of his expertise uh, and understanding and, and talent as a coach. Just his basketball mind, his feel for young people, his understanding of the game and the business of basketball, it hits you right away that you're speaking to somebody that uh, you know just as you know has like head coaching level abilities, like Kamani, like Tom. You know, when you meet any of like you know, Eric and Talik, you know, strength, all these guys, great, great people. What did you see from Andre. Different level, Andre and, and Jalen. This is a much different Jalen. Jalen, uh, balls bouncing uh, in the gym with, with Jalen Gaffney. Just seeing him in the building way more than I've ever seen Jalen uh, in the building. And then talking to uh, you know, his family coming in with his mindset, like much different. They've got a much different son coming to campus in the summer in terms of what, what he wants to wants to accomplish according to A.P. and Christy. So, you know, and, and you can see it. I mean, you can see it. How serious he, he is about understanding what this moment means for him as a junior now, like it's time. And then, uh, and Dre, I, I, I've never, you know, he's got to turn it to production and performance and we're confident that he will. And I've got to bring out the talent in him, but I, I've never seen somebody in the gym more than him. I've never never seen somebody in the gym more than I've seen him. Yeah, just the the guy that's pushing the envelope daily, the guy that comes into the gym that wants to be one of the driving forces of the program, like a, a player that comes in with the mentality at both ends of the court that He's, uh, he's approaching in terms of his aggression at both ends of the court that, hey, coach, I'm a leading man. You know, I'm not a supporting actor in this movie anymore. I'm a leading man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy that's, uh, that's just constantly attacking every time I've got the ball. I'm blasting in transition. I'm trying to make plays off the dribble. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for my offense. I'm, 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 like, I want, to, I want to be a starter. I want to be a full-time starter that you could rely on for high level production. Um, you know, and then a guy who's obviously louder in terms of leadership standpoint, you know, it's like, who's gonna be the driving force behind this thing this year? Like what, what couple players are gonna merge that way? I think I'm pretty confident like that RJ will be one of those guys. I'm, I'm pretty sure that like Adama is gonna be one of those guys. It's like, like I said, like I say, like this guy's like, Cook and they're like, who wants to be a driving force behind this, not just a piece 